Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about probably one of the most pathetic virtue signals that I've ever seen, okay? And stories like this come around every, I don't know, couple years or so, okay? Uh, where they want us to believe that men and women are the same and that women can actually compete amongst men in sports, right? And that historically, women aren't competing against men in sports because we're biologically different. It's because of the patriarchy, right? It's because of discrimination, okay? So every few years or so, you will get stories like this to make it believe that women are making po progress on this issue, right? Uh, we're slowly becoming closer to women being able to play in sports like, you know, basketball or football or whatever with men, right? However, it's never going to happen, right? It's never going to happen. And when it does happen, uh, it is nothing but a woke virtue signaling stunt. And that's what we got to talk about here today because apparently history was made on Saturday in college football as Haley Van Voorhis becomes first woman non-kicker to play in college football game. Now, before I show you guys the video of her playing here in the game, <laughs> I'm going to give you guys some context in regards to this woman. Okay, this is her. Okay, uh, she goes to Shinoda uh, University, right? A Division three school, and her stats are non-existent, right? For her career, um, she hasn't put up anything, right, at all, okay? Um, so, again, she has nothing, right? Nothing at all, right? And she's played for three years or so, okay? As a safety, um, you know, all three years. She's 5'6", 145, okay? 5'6", 145. That, that's like the average size of a, of, a, of a male middle school football player, right? I'm just saying, I think the average high school player is bigger than that, okay? Uh, yeah, this is, this is not good, okay? It's not good. But let's read here because they put her in the game. A woman made some NCAA football history on Saturday. Haley Van Voorhis, uh, who plays safety for Division III Shenandoah University, became the first woman non-kicker to play in a NCAA football game. Van Voorhis entered the game in the first quarter with Shinoda leading Huniata by 26 points. Yeah, so they had basically, you know, blown out this team in the first quarter, right? And she came in for one play, right? They, they gave her one play. And, and this is what happened, okay? I want y'all to watch here, okay? I want y'all to watch. Look at number 10, line. So now, okay? This is number 10. This is her coming into the game. Third down intermediate from their own 23, 24 yard line. Yeah, third down, another big play, as I said. Uh, formationally really diverse for the Eagles. Usually they mix up being under center. Now, if you notice, she's a safety, but it, they kind of got her playing linebacker, right? It looks like she's going to rush the quarterback here on this play, okay? But her role is, is, is safety. And I want you guys to notice how the opponent reacts. Center in in the gun, but so far today, exclusively in the gun. German with trips left, throws under duress, incomplete. <laughs> I think Quinn Okay, so if you notice here, okay, she's rushing the quarterback. Nobody touches her. So they purposely decide not to block her, right? Don't touch her, right? Don't block her. They purposely decide to let her be a free rusher. German with trips. And left. she ends up basically rush, uh, roughing the passer, right? Income. Because that's what that is. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Exclusively in the gun. Let's German see. with trips left, throws under duress. <laughs> in yeah. <laughs> so she ends up giving the quarterback a bear hug here okay i guess you could call that a tackle um i guess some people would say that's rough for the passer i don't know you guys let me know i'm not sure trips um maybe not i mean he did just release the ball that throws under dress. but uh yeah she thought she was making a play Incomplete. right and it seems like the announcer thought that she was making a play as well too a lot of footsteps it came up empty at the 25 yard line yeah quentin stevens has made some nice plays early on Number 10. Yeah, so uh, people are saying that was rushing the passer. I'm not sure 
uh, if that was actually rough in the past. I mean, she did kind of follow through uh, with, you know, taking the quarterback to the ground, I guess maybe, but I'm not sure. I, I have some issues with how modern day football they call rut and passer. I mean, it's almost like you just can't hit the quarterback anymore. And if you've actually ever been in that position where you're rushing a quarterback, um, that's a bang bang play, right? It's really hard to stop your momentum and not try to tackle the quarterback when you're going full speed, right? So I'm not sure if that was rough in the passer, but uh I'm not sure if the quarterback actually heard footsteps either. I mean, that play was designed to let her be a free rusher. And she um, did what she was supposed to do. It's just that the receiver didn't execute because basically the receiver was open because they were letting her free rush on purpose, right? I mean, that's where the ball was supposed to go. And <laughs> the receiver dropped it. So again, they played a really bad team, okay? And, um, you know, she only got in for one play, it seems. And um, now she's getting all types of congratulations and people are celebrating her for simply doing something that I'm not sure we really should be celebrating at all. Okay, I don't believe in participation trophies, all right? But that's what she's going to get here. The junior who is 5'6 and 145 pounds register a quarterback hurry on third down. Quote, it's an amazing thing, Van Voorhis said after the game, according to the Washington Post. I just wanted to get out and do my thing. I wanted to show other people this is what women can do to show what I can do. It's a big moment. I made the impossible possible, and I'm excited about that. Okay, look, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. You didn't do anything, <laughs> right? Go, getting out there on the field and purposely the team not letting you get hit, right? The opponent team not hitting you. Because, again, if one, all it takes is for them to line up and to do a run play towards her, especially considering how they had her on the edge, right, and have a fullback or something like that, run at her with a full set of steam, okay, uh, you know, 5'10", 220-pound man, she would get destroyed, right? She would get absolutely destroyed okay i mean her life would be in danger right not something i want to see until a woman lines up and takes on a fullback with a full head of steam okay i don't want to hear it right i don't want to hear nothing about i went and did the impossible that i'm doing things and showing women what women can do nah you ain't doing nothing that was a virtue signal right that was a show that was a trick. That was simply to make you feel good. That's why you was only in there for one play. That's why you, you've you only played one snap out of a three-year career. Because the coaches know that you basically would probably get destroyed out there on the field trying to play against men. Okay? They know that. Van Horace, a native of Plains, Virginia, uh, played on the school's junior varsity team for the past two years. Uh, she attended high school at... Christ Church and was a uh, 2019 All-State Honorable Mention on her football team. <laughs> her senior season was canceled because of COVID-19. Van Voorhis doesn't just play college football. She is a sprinter on uh, Shenandoah's track and field team. Shenandoah went on to beat Huniata 48-7, who approved to 2-1 with the win. <laughs> Women have been kickers in college football before. Katie Hanita in 2003 became the first woman to score in an NAA Division 1A football game as the place kicker at New Mexico. In 2020, Sarah Fuller became the first woman to score in a Power 5 football game as the kicker for Vanderbilt. Quote, I just think it's incredible that I'm able to do this and all I want to do is be a good influence to the young girls out there because there are times like this I struggle in sports, Fuller said at the time. But I am so thankful I stuck with it, and it's given me so many opportunities. I've met so many amazing people through sports, and I just want to say, like, literally, you can uh, do anything you set your mind to. Uh, Fuller later returned to her primary job as a goalie for the Vanderbilt women's soccer team. Yeah, of course she did, right? I mean, again, this is virtue signaling, okay? This is, hey, look at me. Uh, we made history, right? When, again, that you didn't do anything. You didn't accomplish anything at all. And if anything, stuff like this is only going to inspire women, naive women, to come out here and to try to play a man's game, and they're going to end up getting hurt, right? They, women do not belong on the same field as men, especially in contact sports. It, it, there's a reason why I segregate it, okay? I personally don't think this should be allowed, but I got to be honest with you guys. Darwin Wards exists for a reason, right? If there are people out there that don't believe 
in biology, okay? They don't believe that men and women are different biologically, but maybe just maybe they need a reality check. But again, you know, because of the men on that team, right, and the men on the other team, they're not actually gonna allow this woman to get the reality check because, again, they don't want to hurt her, right? They don't want her to actually go out there and get hurt. So, I mean, she's never gonna get touched when she gets on the field, right? Any man that lays this woman out on the field, they're gonna be accusing him of being a misogynist, okay? They're going to basically hate the guy, right? He's gonna be one of the most hated people in the country if you actually give this woman a reality check. Not gonna happen. So with that being said, again, she's gonna get her virtue signaling points. The mainstream liberal media is gonna talk about it, but to be quite honest with you, it's not anything really to celebrate. It's just more woke nonsense. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.